Welcome to another episode of the Live by EG podcast. I'm Jacob Lara, worship pastor here at Encounter Grace Church, and with me today is the Broski. I'm talking about Seth Tello or Seth Tello. <laughs> it's okay. I'm used to Freddie it's being okay. here, man. I, I, I'm it's, used to Freddie being here it's, too. Yeah, it's because in heart and spirit, y'all are brothers. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, sure. <laughs> well, that'll work. Seth that'll work. Rico. Sorry, I meant Seth Rico. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Fred. We miss you, Fred. We shout do. out to Josh we too. We got to get Josh on here at some point. At some point. At some point, he he will be on here. You will know about the legend of Joshua Tello. That's gonna be the most productive podcast <laughs> ever, and I'm so excited for it. Oh, I know it. I, I need to message him and say, "Hey, man, we got to get you on this thing." But. Well, we hope that you're having a, a great day. We're excited to, to kind of start this thing off because we came across uh, something on TikTok that I thought was pretty interesting. And excuse me. Wow, that was not planned. <laughs> Might have an ASMR, ASMR episode with these mints in our... <laughs> we, we, for the record, we knew this was going to be yeah, a bad idea. We knew. And we just... We're going to go... We're going to go... We're going to go forth We're with just going to wing it That's here. what we do. Well... <laughs> Well, what I want to do real quick is I want to show y'all this uh, this this video that we came across on, and and I've and some of this stuff I have heard about in the past, but what we're actually going to show you is a video that talks about God's name being encoded in our DNA. I want y'all to check this out. This is really really interesting stuff here. In your genetic code, it's a double helix that right turns, and there are these sulfur bridges in the midst of every single atom that you have that has a code. And what happens is, every 10, there's a bridge, and then every 5, there's a bridge, and then every 6, there's a bridge, and then every 5, there's a bridge, and then it repeats over and over and over and over again. And that's a part of your DNA, that's a part of my DNA. This is something that we just recently discovered, this whole thing of 10, 5, 6, 5. Well, what is amazing is, with the numbers, actually correspond with Jewish letters. The number, if you notice that there's two number fives, both of those are H's. And then if you'll notice that the number 10 is a Y and the number 6 is a W, is how the Jews spell Yahweh. And God's name is literally written in your DNA. Okay, well you see how there's two number fives and there's two H's. The word for both of those is behold, behold. The symbol for the Y is a hand and the symbol for the W is a nail. The name Yahweh means behold the nails in my hands. In your genetic all right, so I don't know about you, but like in the spirit of Easter Sunday and all that, mm. what a timely like video yeah. because that blew me away. I, did you know about this? <laughs> I had no idea. I've heard of stuff like mm -hmm, this. Like mm -hmm. that, I, I feel like that's a minuscule of everything out there. Right. And it's really fun to find all of this. But I had no idea that. Well, I, I never would have found the, the why, the ages. And yeah. It, it, there's no way, but I think it's really cool. Well, and it's, what's interesting about the, the Jewish, uh, the language and then their, 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 their whole, the whole way they do things is just interesting. You know, every letter means a, it represents a number. It also represents a thing like, you know, that we just saw there. See, that stuff I knew. What I didn't know was the genetic code thing and how it also translated uh, the nails and, and the hand, like to uh -huh. me, that is so powerful. Uh, I, I, when I when I when I thought about that, uh, it made me think of the scripture um, that it's in it's in Romans fourteen eleven. Uh, For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. And and then there's another scripture that says in Philippians two ten verses through eleven. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Isaiah 45, 23 says, By myself I have sworn from my mouth has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. So, you know, to me, those scriptures, you know, mean a little bit something more because I used to think every knee will confess or every knee will bow and every tongue will confess but i'm thinking to myself 
I, I mean, really, even an atheist to speak in the name of God. Uh, one thing that I know, it, it wasn't in that video, and I don't know if, you are, if, you're, if you've ever heard this. <clears throat> so take all that information that we just got, right? The, the DNA matching the name <clears throat> of God. If you pronounce God's name, it is literally, there's no, there's no uh, vowels in, in that. In that, we added the A and the and the E to call it, call him Yahweh, but in reality there is no A and there's no E in there. It's just they call it Yorve Have, but in its original translation, it's literally a it's a breath. I don't know if you knew that. I had no idea. Yeah, in the original context of how to say God's holy name. It so is, like like in Hebrew is in, what, yeah. like the, you're, you're the old school Hebrew or yes, original Hebrew. The original text. And, 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 and a lot of Jewish priests consider the name of God so holy that they wouldn't even try to pronounce it. But in essence, what they're trying to say is like, you can't because it's a literal breath. It's And it's crazy to think about. It's really beautiful when you think about yeah, it. That's it is. really, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. It's my, it's I always learn something when I come on here. With you. <laughs> I always just take something away. Yeah, man. But I, I just think that's interesting because, you know, sometimes we we don't look at the Bible the way we should because maybe we, I don't know, you you, <clears throat> you grow up, you go through culture and things like that. And, and it's like, the you know, the word of God doesn't seem as appealing, especially when you're in those ages where you just you just want to go out, you know, and do your own thing. Mm-hmm. But man, it's like I, I really wish I would have known this when I was younger because it's just so interesting, and it really, to me, it just makes this whole journey of our faith uh, a whole lot more interesting. There's <clears throat> there's such a mystery out there between, uh, or I guess I should say the the bridges between science and faith. Oh, yeah. You know, a, a lot of people will will pin science against faith mm-hmm. and they will you know well it's always science versus god it's always god versus science but really when you dig into it and when you stumble upon videos like that you know you'll see like no god god believes in science too you know it's it's just a matter of you know who we're getting this information from you Absolutely. know we'll, we'll, we'll always find these scientists that you know think they can disprove <clears throat> um different religions and different faiths but at the same time um you know it you're gonna find things just like this uh, i've seen one about a, a god cell you yeah. know that we have in oh in yeah our, uh, i think i know what you're it's some about, kind yeah. of chromosome or yeah. it's a cell yeah. but it, it's in the shape of a cross yes and, yep. and yeah. you know it's you're gonna find these things that scientists can't disprove <laughs> you know the scientists have yet to be able to disprove God. Um, and I, I think it's kind of a beautiful thing, really, it because it, it it's is. fun to see. It's fun to watch, you know, and it, it's just fun to 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 learn more about one, the signs behind us yeah. and his creation of That's us, right. his creation of everything. It's beautiful to see, you know, how much thought he put into this. And, you know, I, I saw somewhere... I think it was a TV show, but they were they were talking about uh, gravity. You know, the the mm. Earth's gravity, gravitational pull. If it was just slightly mm-hmm. off, either mm-hmm. way, I mean, the world would just be gone. I and think that was a. I heard that from from Cat Williams' discussion. I think he was talking to uh, Joe Rogan. I heard it on Young Sheldon. Really? Yeah. Oh, Young Sheldon, <laughs> gosh. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, and that was that was really cool to see because it's like, yeah, I mean, just right, it's smack dab in the middle, right where yeah. it needs to be. Right and, where it needs to be. And yeah. you can't tell me that we just got lucky, yeah. you know. Yeah. You can, I mean, you can, you can, if you want to live by that outlook, <laughs> like, yeah, we're we're just getting lucky. We're just out here <laughs> getting lucky, spinning around on this speeding yeah. crater headed towards god knows where and not burning up in the sun not you know getting hit by anything not hitting in any, anything else i i guess more power to you but that mm-hmm. doesn't sound like a, a way to live it really doesn't well i know <clears throat> from from the conversations i've i've listened to uh i can't remember and i should i mean because i'm a 
I'm a former educator, but the math, the, math, yeah, it's just math, and nobody likes math. <laughs> Well, people, I like people it. Like I that. like it. I don't, but people do. But some people do. Crazy people <laughs> do. People that have... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if there's a study on like what kind of brains people have that love math. But yeah. Anyways. <laughs> it's a <laughs> side, different podcast. Sidetrack. No, but I, I heard this discussion this, with these guys that were talking about uh, that, exactly what you're talking about. And I, I think it was Frank Turek... Uh, who who brings the the statistics out on this but he basically says that the the probability there it is the probability of of us being here and the universe being created in this big freak accident only to be in this literally one in a i think it's like a billion times 10 to the power of 100 and something something which means he goes if you if you take that probability and 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 put it in a visual he said it would be like if you were to shoot a bb gun on one end of the entire universe and shoot it and hit the smallest bullseye less smaller than the size of a penny and hit it right right on the mark from it. one into he said it's 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 a stupid probability to be where we're at and you're absolutely right so you know i think that people ought to really consider that you know if you're not a believer or if you're struggling with your faith you ought to really tell yourself like this isn't we are not freak accidents mm -mm. you know if that's the case you know this is a whole nother discussion i mean we can talk about it if you want but if that's the case if we're just one big freak accident then really there is no there is no uh, absolute morality. In other words, if we are the determination, or if we if we are the people who determine morality, then that means that if God's if God's way and in God's law is 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 not it is is not final because God doesn't exist and God didn't create all this, then people can go around basically saying, "Well, my morality is uh, I, I'm an, I'm subjective morality," which means what I think is right is what's right. Hmm. And that sounds preposterous, but think about it. You know, I heard this one, I heard this one guy say <laughs> he, it was a, it was a Q and a, and he goes up to this Christian, uh, uh, he, they call him apo apologetic apologetics. And, uh, he goes, it was an atheist kid. And he was, and, and he goes and, and asked this, uh, this Christian man who's, who goes to college campuses and he's not, he actually passed away uh, a few years ago, but, he said, hey, he goes, why do we need God uh, to, to give us the law? He said, man, we are inherently good. He goes, and we, we do everything right. And he goes, I mean, he goes, there was even Christian Nazis, which I'm like, what? But anyways, but you know, you know what the guy's response was? We're going to put a pin in that. Yeah, we're going to put a pin in that. <laughs> but you know, what the, you know what the response was from the Christian man? He said, because he was basically trying to say that the atheist kid was trying to say, well, men, men and women, humans are inherently good. And then the guy just responds with a quick question. He says, do you lock your door at night? <laughs> In other words, if you trust people that much to be good, that to be inherently good, then don't lock your door. Yeah. You know, don't get a security camera. Don't buy, you know, don't have protection. Don't protect yourself. Because if we are inherently good, then great then you have but we're to not worry about yeah you have nothing to worry about that, but yeah yeah you <laughs> almost you almost have to have more faith to be to believe yes, in that yeah, and that's the funny thing mm -hmm. is like you have to have more faith than anybody else in order to actually believe you have to that yep which i it, it <clears> just <throat> comes full circle and it's really funny I, I find it to be really funny because yeah you know, I, I couldn't imagine um I couldn't imagine going through life not believing in anything, yeah. you know, yeah. like that. Yeah. And when you think about it, you kind of understand why people build this hatred, you mm -hmm. know, towards one another, why they just despise other religions and other faiths. And it it's no wonder you're just so full of hate. You don't believe in mm -hmm. anything, you know, mm -hmm. and it's you, you can't go through life that way. You just can't. You know, are you telling me, you know, 
something good happens in the world, you know, so get, so let somebody get the best of news, you know, somebody, you know, beats cancer and, you know, they've, they've had a hard, a hard life come through it. And you just refuse to, like, you just refuse to celebrate that victory of, yeah. oh, well, his body's strong, you know, oh, hey, he, they just, they beat cancer. That's good. Yeah. Like, really? Like, like you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to partake in any kind of like, Praise God that man beat yeah. cancer. Yeah. Praise God that man, you know, went through it and came mm-hmm. out the other side. You know, that's that's that, that's how I would want to live. Because oh, yeah. I, you have to find the good in everything. You do, yeah. You have to. And to to be a, a person, and I won't even just pick on an atheist. I'm just going to pick a person that just refuses to believe. Mm-hmm. To be that person, which I guess, when you, I guess that is the definition of an atheist. Anyways... <laughs> Um, when, when, if you choose to be that person, then you, you can't really complain when things don't go your way. That's right. And do you yeah. have any right to be upset when, you know, something doesn't fall your direction mm. when you have a bad day? Like what, what do you do when you have a good day? Like, oh, mm. hey, the universe is just with me, you know, like oh, yeah. hey, my stars got aligned or, you know what? <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like what, what yeah. do you believe? That sounds like a hard life. That yeah. sounds stressful. Mm-hmm. It really does. But I, I, I don't know. You, you, there's, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. That's, that's just, that sounds exhausting. Yeah. That yeah. does sound exhausting. I've heard that. I've heard that exact statement uh, from several uh, people that say it takes more faith to be an atheist than it does to be a Christian. Yes. Because it's so, there's just so much to, to trying to un, undo what God has done. And, you know, and, and there's just so much stuff that you just you can't write off. You know, you can't, you know, but I, I've, I've had I've seen, you know, these these debates and I heard I heard this one debate and I thought that's a really good point. But uh, this guy said, you know, how can anybody believe in God when, you know, a lot of things in the Bible don't line up with science or with excuse me with all these things and 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 the guy goes well he goes it's it's he goes you're you're trying to make an argument based off of uh i forget what he calls it he uses fancy word these guys are like super smart <laughs> he uses really long yeah, words he uses these really long words but basically what he's saying is uh it would be like if see i'm a math teacher and, and it would be like if i was trying to disprove uh history in a math book because you know, where is Washington? I don't see Washington in this book. I don't see Lincoln in this book. Well, you're not going to see those guys in this book because this book's not about them. This book is about math. And he goes, it's the same thing with, with, with Bible. He said, the Bible is not a math book. It's not a scientific book. It's a book that is literally devoted and dedicated to the love of God towards humanity. And all through the story, it all points to Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. He said, it has. It, it, if God wasn't trying to explain I mean, yeah, he says he created things and <clears throat> and he spoke them into existence. And that sounds preposterous, right? That sounds ridiculous. But whenever you dig a little bit deeper into science and all that, you'll find out, man, you know, there's no way, there's no possible way that we were just one big freak accident because it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. I mean, you, it, a lot would have to align. And of course, that's what people believe in. Like, yeah, that's exactly what happened. That's why humankind is so, you know, is such a, that's why the Big Bang is such a beautiful story because everything had to align. Like, mm, I mean, that just sounds like lazy writing, if oh, you yeah. ask me. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, everything <clears throat> just aligned right. And, you know, there's a big explosion. And then now we have people. Yeah. Like, that, that sounds lazy well and and there's and there's all throughout history and culture uh a lot of archaeologists have found that different areas all across the world have have this story of a great flood Mm. i don't know if you've ever heard of that yeah they go ahead i I bet you're you're going right into it well that's that's all i was going to say was there's they're discovering that every culture has this and, and almost every culture, but every, you know, historic, you know, ancient culture has this story about a great flood. Mm-hmm. It, it, which Come is on, weird, man. right? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. almost the same as, you know, hey, there's, 
you know, the pyramids. You know, everyone keeps hearing, like, every culture has a form of pyramids <clears throat> yeah. somewhere, yep. like ancient pyramids, too. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, well, how did everyone get the exact same blueprints? You know, like, yeah. how does right. that happen? There's a lot that we don't know. There's a lot, and, and yeah. I, you know, and a lot of people are like, "Well, hey, you know, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that was made up in the Bible. I doubt it. <laughs> I'll give it to you, but I doubt it. But the same could be said for a lot yeah. of these science textbooks too. Oh, you know, yeah. there there yeah. could be a lot that was made up there. Yeah. But you know, like <clears throat> I, I love the fact that you know, as time progresses, we're still finding you know uh, artifacts from the Bible, like yep. the Ark. Yes, you know, you mentioned yeah. the the flood. Yep, yep. They found. Have they That's have right. they deemed it the ark yet, or have they? They're still. I think if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, they're still trying to you know validate it. But the outside of of the whole thing is like petrified wood. It's the exact measurements. And, and they've too. even and they've even found like these these old ancient anchors. Not 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 in a boat anchor, but like these rivets to mm-hmm. hold the wood together. That's it. And it's like. They're, and they're like, this has to be it. This has to be it. <laughs> yeah. They, and that, what's funny is yeah. they can't prove that it's not. Mm-mm. They can't prove that it is. I mean, we we can as as, as yeah. Christians and anyone that reads the Bible. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we're, we're glad to tell you exactly what that is. Absolutely. But, you know, as scientists and just like a scientist nature, and that doesn't make them a bad person, but... You know they're they're trying to figure out. Okay, we 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 can prove that this isn't that. I mean, surely it's got to be something else. But and it's like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's right there in the Bible. You can't but, you can't argue that. No, no, and, and everything. You know the uh, I don't know what the, what's a Christian scientist called, man. What's a what's a uh, just a Christian geologist? Christian. Is it still, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know if there's somebody yeah. that dedicates their studies to biblical uh, yeah. findings, right. but. There, there actually is. Um, there's, there's a guy I love this, this dude, and and one of these days I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to break down some of his vi- vi- videos. Um, his name's Kent Hoven, Kent Hoven, and this guy has has caused so much of a stir, even in like the or late '90s, uh, that he he was shut down by a lot of networks, and and people didn't want him talking about the things he was talking about because. <clears throat> He talks about dinosaurs and how <clears throat> a lot of a lot of athe- science scientists that are atheists will say, "Well, you know, how do you how do you validate the Bible when the Bible doesn't even talk about dinosaurs?" And he goes, "Oh, he goes, I can tell you." He said the word dinosaur wasn't even invented until you know like the fifth, like forties or something. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. It was like the it was like the early nineteen hundreds, I think. Yeah, mid nineteen hundreds. He goes, the Bible doesn't call them dinosaurs. Because they call them dragons, and they call them beasts, mm-hmm. and so, <clears throat> and you can. There's a scripture in the Book of Job that says he describes uh, riding the tail of a beast that's the size of a branch, <clears throat> and there's plenty of dinosaurs that have those that match that description. He talks about a unicorn. And they're like, "Oh, unicorns!" And he said, "No, no, no, no. You don't understand what unicorn actually means in its original text. Uni means one, and the corn means the horn." And he said he's referring to an ancient rhino, an ancient, uh, and I'm like, well, why I did never, you just say that? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> of course, back then, you don't, <clears throat> I mean, we, we think a unicorn has a little pink, fluffy, fluffy horse with a <laughs> wings and a, and, a, and a little horn. But, but and scientifically, that's what, it, that's what they would call, you know, these rhinos. And so it's interesting, dude. Like I, I feel like we need to. I could go down that rabbit yeah. hole for hours, and yeah, it, it would. It'd be the most. It'd probably be the most productive I'd be all day, to be honest <laughs> with you, because I'm not a productive person. Well, I'll tell you, there's a there's also been discoveries of of giants. I don't know. Have you ever seen this? Yes. Uh, but no, I've seen. I've gone down the the Nephilim rabbit oh, hole. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. an interesting it is rabbit interesting, hole. It's yeah. the, it's really cool. And <clears throat> I, I, I mean, I'll tell there's you, so much to that one too, man. Man, TikTok is dangerous. <laughs> TikTok and a bathroom break, you can learn a lot. <laughs> you can learn a lot with TikTok and a bathroom break. It's ridiculous. That was good. Yeah, I've learned some pretty pretty enlightening stuff while I'm. <laughs> you give me some Mexican food and you know TikTok about forty five minutes later and a good bathroom break about fifteen minutes. I'll come back. I I know way more You're than like, I did right. when I graduated. <laughs> I don't even need school, dude, man. That's for real though. Like, there's some <laughs> stuff that I'm like, man, I 
I didn't learn this in high school or yeah. middle school. No. That, that goes for Sunday school too. <clears throat> like, I mean, they, I've learned a lot about the Bible through TikTok. <laughs> now, you know, luckily I've I've got a buddy like Jacob where I can run this by. I'm like, <laughs> just true. <laughs> you know, like, what do you think about this? Like, like how tall you think Adam and Eve were? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Just just a guessment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, but the but the whole giant thing. The, what I've heard too, man, is that they've discovered. Uh, the remains of, of giant human beings. And I didn't know this uh, up until a few years ago, but supposedly, and this is Ken Hovind saying this, he goes, the Smithsonian has been paying to buy all these, uh, all these findings. And he goes, the problem is they don't put them on display. He said they have a basement where they put all, a lot of stuff that they don't want to display or that they just don't <clears throat> have, have up there. Yeah. He goes, why do you think that is? Because there's an agenda, mm -hmm. and the agenda is not to validate the Bible at any at any cost. The problem is, we have the power of the internet, and we have the power of everybody has this and a camera on them, and, and bathroom so, breaks, and bathroom breaks. <laughs> that was good, <laughs> bathroom breaks. But you know, the, I, and I feel like it's catching up. You know, to the to this agenda of of trying this antichrist agenda, it, it's falling apart because you're starting to see all this stuff that's just literally validating the bible being true you know what i mean it, it is it is uh, where do you think where do you think aliens falls into that because you know the, <clears throat> last year was it last year maybe two years ago uh -huh. they you know the government came out and said all right you got us aliens exist right nobody batted an eyelash like i mean Ooh. nobody was freaked out <laughs> nobody even could, like well duh of course yeah. we know that you know you're <clears throat> just admitting it but where i mean where do you think you know, I don't, it's hard to say, but I'll tell you this. When you read the Bible and it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, the, the word heavens doesn't actually mean the sky or it doesn't even mean, you know, the 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 things we see in outer space. It means the cosmos and, and cosmos. You mentioned <clears throat> that. Yeah. Yeah. I did mention that uh, during the preaching, but um, so to me. It, it, it doesn't waver my faith one bit because I read that God created everything that we see, even the things that we don't see. The cosmos, there's so much to that. You know, we sent the telescope, you know, the Hubble telescope. Was that how it is? The Hubble telescope? I don't even remember what it's called now. It just sounds like my, 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 my mind's foggy right now. Uh, but yeah, they sent that and then and <clears throat> they're getting pictures and it's just blowing their minds. They're probably seeing stuff that is freaking them out and they're probably not sharing with the, you know, with, with, you know, people, but, um, Hey, you know what? Speaking of that, I got a, there was, there was a, a viral video on TikTok for, and it was, on, it was also on YouTube shorts that the, the tell the new telescope that they have, uh, it did like a, a, a zoom in picture on this nebula looking cloud. And inside that cloud, there was like a city. It looked like a, it looked like there were towers and I buildings. Seen it. Yeah, I kind of want to. Know. <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting, dude. And they're like, "Could this be heaven?" <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, oh, "I mean, probably. It wouldn't surprise me, but it's probably I not." You know, I don't you know. No, but I mean, I'm willing to bet on. There's, there's so many things, and you know, I've. I, I, that's what I tell people. I'm like, anytime something crazy comes out, I'm like, it, it doesn't waver my faith, man. Like I, right. I've read that God has created everything, and if He created aliens. He probably loves them too, and if those aliens are are you know living with malintent, then you know that's on them. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I'm just like, yeah, if we get an alien invasion, I'll be like, well, all right, uh, here we go, and Lord. It is what it is, I guess. Yeah. I, I heard a uh, me and Freddie were talking about the Antichrist, and if you read about the Antichrist, <clears throat> it says he will not be or whoever it is will not be attracted to male nor female. So there's also been this. Uh, theory that either the Antichrist is going to be some kind of AI thing, or it could be alien. It's probably just a human being, but we don't we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just like to make things. We like to make things interesting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah that that could be. It's very plausible. Yeah, an alien though. That's. It's it's hard not to think of Star Wars, you know. Oh, I love Star Wars, man. I, I know you do. I love. I, Star I know Wars. you do, and that's that's a crazy way to think about it, you know. Is <clears throat> yeah. 
the different species that are all intertwining on <laughs> different planets. You know, it, that's just the, that's that's it's wild yeah. to think about. Well, they've discovered planets that are very similar to Earth already. Uh, I, I think they call it Kepler something. Gosh, I don't remember the other names. I just remember Kepler is the one that's closest to us, which is like so many light years away, which is still far. But. What is your algorithm like? Because I don't get any of this. <laughs> I, I get a lot I'm a, of nonsense. Dude, you got to understand, I'm a nerd at heart. Like it's, I look for stuff that's like geeky and space. I'm space. I'm I'm a space guy. I like I like. You're Star a Wars. math teacher. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. Hold up. Okay, no, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Brittany tells me that too. She's like, how do you get this stuff coming up on it? I'm like, it's, it's just, I don't know. I really don't. I just kind of find a video. And apparently if you like something on TikTok, it, it becomes part of your algorithm. So that explains I probably it. like some really that, interesting that, weird stuff that explains it i need oh. standards and morals in, in my likes <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that would probably help out my algorithm <laughs> oh man we we gonna pray for seth and his algorithm <laughs> there's a thing called uh not interested seth you might use that button every now and then i more. need to use that button a lot more <laughs> Yeah, you got you got to man. You know what? Let's talk about. No, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that Let's up. Bring that I'm up. I'm glad you brought that up. That's rude. No man, it's hurtful. <laughs> but uh, you know that that not, nothing nothing of that nature would ever waver my faith. You know, space wise or you know anything out of the ordinary. I think it's pretty cool, to be honest. That, that, that is cool. You could almost say you have the faith of an atheist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you just refuse to not believe otherwise. Yeah, I mean, it's it doesn't... It, my faith isn't wavered by those things, man. It doesn't... Here's the thing. It's, it's that it doesn't convince me... The, excuse me. Aliens don't convince me that God's not real. Yeah. I, that, you know what I mean? It, it, I mean... There, there's not much that could, if anything, right? Well, think about this. We know more about space than we do about the very depths of our ocean. There's got to be a reason for that, right? I don't know. But, 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 but I, I treat it that way. Like, hey, space is part of this whole thing that we're in. So if God created some really weird monsters down there in, in the ocean... Sure, there's some funky looking things in in, in the cosmos. Yeah, I don't want nothing to created. do with either. No, I don't either. <laughs> if I, I'm being honest. I, I find peace in just knowing that whatever is here is is here. But you know, if it comes out, I, I want I don't want to be alive. <laughs> I mean, I, I I mean, I guess you can kind of. I kind of don't blame them because if somebody told you, like, if somebody told me, okay, you got two choices. <clears throat> You can hop in this submarine and you can go to the, you know, the, the no, very bottom do, of the ocean. We ain't doing the submarine thing. <laughs> or you can hop in this flying spacecraft. And, I would rather and do go, that. Right? Yeah. I'm kind of thinking, um, I mean, I got to choose one? Yeah. Like, okay, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go to space. I would rather go to space than, than be in a submarine. I mean, you know, uh, I just, that story traumatized me. Of, <laughs> it's not funny, Seth. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the story. Oh, I'm okay. laughing at... <laughs> I'm laughing at your reasons why you don't want to I just, jump in a summer. If somebody said, let's get in the submarine and it's being ran by a PlayStation 2 I was going to say, it PlayStation had a controller. controller. Nobody thought that was a no, bad idea. man. I would have been like, listen, <laughs> this isn't happening. Look, look I'm going to expect a full refund, but if I don't get it, I'm, I'm not going to be that mad. I'm not going to. No, <laughs> just man. let me go ahead and let me out and I'm, I'm going to yeah. be on my way. That's just, that's just man, that's bad. It's real bad. You know, but you know, there's some other things. Speaking of space, you know, I I told Freddie about this the other day because the one, one of the latest episodes we did was a uh, AI church and, and Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. We talked about the moon turning uh, red. I don't know if you knew about this. <clears throat> so in the Bible, uh, it talks about in the last days the moon will be turned to, uh, red like blood and the sun will be darkened. Check. Excuse me. Check this out. You're finna scare everybody. I'm, well, you know. <laughs> If you're gonna be scared, it's because you because you, you're living wrong. Because you're living wrong. Because no. you, you got Seth's algorithm on your TikTok. <laughs> it's freaking. Sad. Oh sorry. man. 
Anyways, <laughs> keep going. You're, you're gonna they're I'm gonna sorry. have to change your last name back from Tello to Rico, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, the scientists really can't even, uh, they can't explain this right now, but the, the moon is turning red and it's rusting. It's actually rusting. Now, rust needs oxygen. There is no oxygen on, on the moon. Mm -mm. But here's what's interesting. I can't remember the name of it. I remembered it last episode. Now I can't remember it. But the, the, the name of the, uh, of, of the, of the, uh, the chemical that that the moon is turning into which is which is rusting and it's turning into red it actually translates to blood in greek so think about that the moon don't is turning in is turning red now it's i don't know how fast this process is but uh i might pull it up later but there's a guy who who took a picture a very hd picture of of the moon and that's when it was discovered that wait a minute this moon's turning red and that's not that wasn't seen before the sun is starting to have these random dark spots. It can't be explained. There's not really an explanation for it. But the sun is starting to show some black spots every now and then. Mm. <laughs> so because we don't have enough to worry about, Jake. <laughs> because we just don't have enough Listen, to worry about. You have to you have to take this as exciting news. <laughs> like this is God's way of saying, get ready, get ready. That's TD Jakes. That's, I knew that. That's a, that's a good impression. That, that's TD Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. This is God's way of saying that, though. Like, it, it, he tells it, he warns us, you know, uh, just like the sailor can can tell the times of, 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 I forgot how he says, I'm ruining this scripture, but he basically says, you know, that you can tell the the weather patterns, you know, through, through the signs of, of the seasons. He said it's the same for his coming. He's going to show these things. And in those things, that's a warning for us to know that he is coming soon. A lot of the things that I used to read in the book of Revelation, I thought that sounds like outlandish. Like, how is that ever going to happen? But I'm like, the more I see these things, the more I'm like, of course, God, you just you're just flexing right now. Do you ever just like take things that you heard as a kid from revelation and like try to understand like what could that have been they're like because mm -hmm. there was like an animal with what multiple heads or a beast oh yeah it. yeah yeah and you're like now what could that have been in mm -hmm. today's times i do that all the time it's my roman empire really well you know <laughs> the end of the world is my roman empire <laughs> <laughs> well think about the, the bible is so interesting especially in the book of revelation my dad has this book <clears throat> he let he let me borrow it one time and i and i read some of it, but it was. Did you give it back? I did give it back. Oh, yeah. say, nope, nope. It's still sitting yeah. on my. <laughs> no, I gave it back because he. I think he he wanted. It. It's a really good book, and he. I think he wanted to use it for a preaching. This was years ago though, and this guy breaks down the book of Revelation, and he kind of get theorizes what a lot of that stuff could mean because the Bible always uses like, uh, I guess like imagery or how do you say that metaphors. Metaphors, illustrations, illustrations. Gosh, I'm a math teacher. Y'all not an English teacher. Um, I'm a car salesman. <laughs> since we're flexing, well, since we're flexing here, <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, they, <laughs> the the Bible uses stuff like that to uh, to uh, symbolize things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, the Book of Daniel uses it. Uh, and I know there's other books too that use th that kind of stuff, but anyways, uh, that's the book of revelation a lot. <clears throat> not, I don't know. See, that's the thing. I don't, I can't remember what all is translated like as a literal mm -hmm. or as symbolic, but I know a lot of it is, is symbolic and that was weird, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but anyways, I think, uh, you know, the book of Revelations is a very interesting read, though. It, it, it is, is a really some... interesting read. I mean, it's it'll it'll put fear in you. It it will uh, it'll make you uh, second guess some of your decisions and uh, and uh, <laughs> some some life choices. Why are you laughing, Jake? Because you keep bringing <laughs> the algorithm. <laughs> I didn't say anything oh, about the algorithm. I, I said, think I just I, I thought decisions. I thought that was implied. I thought that was implied. <laughs> no, you're implying it. Uh, I did not come here to be attacked. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, it's uh, man. You you gotta do a 
you got to do something on Revelation. That, yeah. Because that, you, can, you can dig into that because it, uh, it's, it's interesting. Good. It's scary. It's interesting, though. It, it, you know, it's funny because it is scary because you see or you read and you and you see how the world is just going to fall apart, which it already is. If, if, say, if, we're, if we're honest here, it is it's scary. not looking good. And, and that breaks my heart for, you know, for, for, for these younger, you know, kids. But who, who knows? I mean, they might get to be our age, you know. And mm-hmm. I mean, the, 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 here's the thing. Here's the most interesting thing is the Bible says that when God comes, he's going to come like a thief in the night. So do we know, are we certain of, of the era that he may come or the times that he may come? We could be. But, the, but, but Jesus still says that no one will know. The time or the hour of the day and he he also describes it in a way where he's basically saying everybody's going to be going about their day people are going to be getting married people are going to be working it's just going to be a normal day and boom god's going to come that is what stands out to me because i've heard <clears throat> you know pastors preach uh uh and and i've heard this everywhere you know and and, and me and my dad have talked about this how some pastors will do these like big series on the end times and, and things like that. And, I, and it's all interesting. It really is. It's, it's something that every church I think should, should, should go over. But, <clears throat> but I heard, but I, I think it's also important for us to know that we shouldn't spend, you know, our time trying to figure out when God's going to come. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause Jesus says, no one's not. Jesus even says this. He goes, I don't even know. Only the father knows. So he's, he's, he's like, nobody knows but god's gonna come when everyone least expect it and so it kind of is eerie to think about like it's eerie but it's exciting it's eerie for 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 some people because you're like whoa like what is the world gonna be like when that happens like how how much worse could it get mm-hmm. before you yeah. know before they, they pull the ripcord on it? Okay, so so let's let's talk about this because I, I want to go back to the alien thing. I've heard okay somebody say this and I thought mm, that's interesting, but I heard somebody say I feel like the government might be trying to validate the existence of aliens <clears throat> so that they can have a excuse excuse for mm-hmm. the rapture. And I thought would not surprise me. That's actually not a Would bad not theory. Me. That's not a bad theory. Mm-mm. You know, not and again, that's not me saying aliens don't exist. But you got to think about it, man. Like, what if what if that is part of the agenda there? Because remember, there's an antichrist agenda. It, okay, so I mean this on a serious note. Right. Okay, you're not going to take me seriously, but I do mean okay. this on a serious note. Okay, do you know what reminded me of the Raptor? Was that in game? In game. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Mar- uh, Avengers? Yes. Yeah, w- yeah. When Thanos snapped his finger yeah. and half the world just vanished. Disappeared. Yeah. No, that's that's, that's actually exactly what I yeah. thought of because I'm thinking, you know, here the Avengers are fighting and meanwhile, all the Christians are losing their mind when this is going on in this movie. Yeah. But when you think about it, I was kind of just thinking, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, I mean, as, as being one of the people in the theater, I'm thinking... Yeah, everyone just sees this as an Avengers movie. I say, me, I've seen Left Behind, and that's a completely different Left movie. Left Behind. Why bro. have they not remade this movie? Dude, yet? They need to. Man. Why we, have they we got not all this updated production? Where stuff? is Kirk Cameron? Kirk Cameron, you, get if him. If you on are the phone. watching this, sir, you're not. Please. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> if, you never know. He yeah. might be on a bathroom break. He might. And and we're we're going to be a part of that bathroom we're, break. I would hope we pop up in his algorithm. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Why you think his algorithms like mine? It might be. You never. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I got faith in Kurt Cameron. Me too. I got faith in you too, Seth. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But I mean, yeah. In all seriousness, I mean, it's yeah. Th- that's a really plausible scenario. Dude, is you know, hey, yeah. half the world goes missing. Boom, aliens. Mm-hmm. And who's going to explain it? This. Old guy that can't put two sentences together. <laughs> yeah, who who better? Who, who better oh, to man. explain it than that guy? If he if he's the president during this, it wouldn't surprise me. I wouldn't mind as much if I'm being <clears throat> honest with you. 
<laughs> it would be quite the show. Honestly, he, he, any president really. I'm so no. I'm so done with politics. I'm, I, I just too. I can't I, I can't. You know it's I'm, so, I, I'm yeah. tired of trying to line up with either red or blue or left or right. Like I just yeah. people just go to church. It, it's a lot easier. That's good. It, it's way easier it than is. just because a lot of people are we're getting off subject, but a lot of people are starting to choose party over purpose. And and, yeah. And, yeah. and and what's right and what's mm-hmm. wrong. And that tells me that we are headed in a very, very uh, wrong direction. Well, um, it's like, too, how so many people get angry and bitter with, with all that. And yeah. I'm like, look, it's, I mean, I get it. You know, we we may have disagreements when it comes to, you know, certain parties and all that, but we're supposed to be a one nation under God, yep. not one nation under a Republican or under a Democrat. And I feel like that's what we moved towards. We did. We moved towards that. Yep. And we forgot our identity as a nation, as a country. We did. We did. And it's sad. It, it is sad. So, you know, I've kind of, you know, I've kind of just yeah. kinda given up on the whole politic thing because it's to. just, it's not going anywhere and it's not going in a good direction. So, it, and, and, you know, it's, I feel like it's, it's meant to be that way because that's just part of, that's part of the Bible prophecy. You it know? is. This world is, you know, it's headed towards a pretty dark, you know, era. And, and I think what's even more scarier is, and see, this is and this is what I was trying to get at, and I, and I lost my train of thought there. But the world is is going towards a really dark place, so much so that we consider a lot of this stuff normal. You know, like fighting is normal. People um, hating each other now is normal. And 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 what, so, what, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, like okay, so t- to me, fighting. And wars and hatred have been around since the biblical days. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. So elaborate. How, do you feel like it's gotten worse? You know, I think it. It's the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. You know, and so I think that it's not necessarily that it's gotten worse. I think it's just where. How do I say this? The war has always been war. Fighting has always been fighting. But I think we've we've. At, at America at least had this stability of, hey, we, we are under God. Mm-hmm. And we honored God. Yeah, we didn't, we, we're not perfect. But now that, you know, we're in this progressive, weird <clears throat> era as a country, now we're, we're pushing God out. Mm-hmm. We pushed God out of schools, and school shootings have gotten worse. Way worse. I can say that, you know, that's a fact. Ever since God has been pushed out of public schools, the shootings have gotten worse. Mm-hmm. And 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 I'm not saying that that's the reason. And God forbid that that ever happened anymore. I pray that that doesn't happen anymore. But I feel like it's it's the result of us allowing <clears throat> the government to tell us that God shouldn't be uh, rever- reverenced in in public education or. In any part of our in any part of our government, and and I feel like the more we kick out God, the worse it's going to get. You know what I mean? Because right now, and and I don't know how to put I don't know how to you know break this down without taking a lot you know any more time. But God's spirit still hovers over this earth. I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but the Bible says that when He takes His people. He's taking his spirit. And there's going to be... That's even scary. Yeah. It, thank you. It is going to be very scary. And <clears throat> so I don't want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to be a part of things getting to that point. And so the, I, what I see right now is that this country is just headed in a, in a direction where we're ignoring God, we're demeaning God, we're kicking out God in, in public education. We're kicking him out of our, <clears throat> of, of our football games. We're kicking him out of all these things. And you know, what's even crazier is I feel like we're allowing these, these, these groups. And I don't even know if I should call them atheist groups. Cause some of them are, are literal, literally satanic. Um, but they're, you know, basically they're fighting against God being in, in on all this. 
And I have to question, like, where is the church, you know, as a whole? Mm-hmm. Praise God for the churches that do rise up and, and, and fight and stand up for what's right. But I feel like the majority of churches are just doing church mm-hmm. and not, you know, we're, we're not impacting culture anymore, man. It's like we're allowing culture to do its thing. And we're allowing culture and, and we're allowing all these things to just push God out. As long as we get to have church, let's have church. But it's like, no, that's not that's not who, that's not what God has called us to be. What do you think that is? I, I, do, honestly, do, I think. Do you think churches are bound by like legal, you know, red tape and? So, you know, I know in certain areas, yes. Or are they scared to offend people? Excuse me. I think that's what it is. And, and listen, if churches are legally bound to do certain things, um. I think that those churches should stand up for what is right. For what is right, absolutely. you know, that's their job as a church. <sighs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. But you know, unfortunately, the church a- used to be feared, dude. No, no joke. Yeah, they they used to be feared. Yeah, and now it's like they just taken a back seat, right? Yes, and, and you know, I know there's you know anybody that's in politics will say, well, what about the separation of church and state? Well, let me tell you about that. <laughs> the 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 way. Or the, the reasoning behind that statement. Now, I looked this up. I, I studied this a while back. I can't remember who, who coined that term because it's, it's been years. Um, but the, I remember the purpose and the reason behind that statement. It was not because he wanted to take church out of government. It was because he wanted to take government out of church. Mm. Completely different. A completely yep. different perspective there. Yep. So a lot, of, a lot of people that are... I don't know how else to say it, but against church, you know, being in politics, we'll use that statement and say, well, what about the separation of church and state? What about it? You know, let's look mm-hmm. into that because what really the, the whole purpose behind that was to take government and in, in, in the state out of trying to manage the church. But here we are in, in what, 2024. And some of these states are telling churches don't preach against homosexuality. You know, mm-hmm. they're telling churches, uh, don't preach against the uh, gender, you know, identity politics and all that stuff, Equality you know? And- yeah. Yeah. You know, and, <clears throat> and some of these pastors are, are, are bending their knee because they're making all this money in their churches. Right. You know, and, and they don't want to lose that, you know, six figure they, check. Yeah. They don't want to lose that funding. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And don't, that's, that, don't want to uh, upset the, the, the tax gods. <laughs> It's true, though, man. It, it's yeah. sad. Yeah. It is sad. But what do you do, man? You know, this, we're living in a weird era right now. It's a weird time. But I think it's, a, it's also an opportune time for us to really stand up and, and not be scared to, to get persecuted and not be scared to, you know, lose. <clears throat> uh, you know, Jesus, there's a scripture that Jesus said. Uh, he said, if they persecute you, they persecuted me first. And, and he also says, rejoice in that. And, and I feel like some churches forgot how to rejoice in persecution. Some, some, what verse is that? Let's look it up. I can't remember. It is, I believe it's in the Sermon on the Mount. Let's look here. If they, sorry, I'm all. It's John fifteen twenty. Okay, I, that was, I was way off there. John 15, 20, it says, and I like the new King James. King James is a little bit too thee and thou for me. Makes you shooketh. It makes me shook. <laughs> new King James uh, says, remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. Actually, that's a different one. Let me go to... Mm, let me see. There it is, Matthew 5. That was the one that I was looking for. There it is, Matthew 5, 12. It is, it is on the Sermon on the Mount. It says, Rejoice and be glad, Matthew 5, 12, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, they persecuted me in the same way. And so, yeah, he tells them to rejoice in persecution. Matt, granted, you know, he's telling these... I love that. Yeah. I absolutely love Good. that. Good. That's... that. If it, if I take away anything, it's <laughs> it's going to be that. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I heard this 
this guy came up to me after church and, you know, he kind of told me how he's been persecuted in certain areas for, you know, preaching the gospel. Man, I sounded Texan when I said that for. (laughs) (laughs) Wait till you hear the rest of the podcast. Oh, man. (laughs) You know, I I never catch myself until I do. And it's at random times. (laughs) I was like, for goodness gracious, bad gummit. That's that's my that's my uh, Christian. Cu- Do you have any Christian cuss words? Uh, you know what? I've been calling a lot of people. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> why are you laughing? Because you just started with. I, I just been calling people. I've been, I've been calling people uncircumcised Philistines a lot. <laughs> Oh, dude. That is the coldest <laughs> verse in the book. Bu- Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? <laughs> First of all, you don't need to be talking about my manhood, sir. <laughs> like, that's, like, as if I'm Goliath, I'm gonna be a little upset too. <laughs> like, that little guy got done. like. I had a whole backstory. Like, did David just catch that man just going doing his business outside one day? That was the and, biggest insult. Yeah, bro. like you imagine yeah. hearing that you're outside. <laughs> Early morning, you you gotta you just woke up. You're well, going behind a tree, and then you just hear David way back there across the river. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? <laughs> I gotta zip up real quick. First, like, he starts off with, "I knew it." No, <laughs> yeah, like, no, it's because it's because hey, circumcision it's, it's, was a Jewish thing. It's, 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 call somebody an uncircumcised Philistine. Yeah. Just watch that their face. Just I, I can't argue with the uncircumcised part. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole nother <laughs> Christian curse word. Uh, uncircumcised Philistine. Uncircumcised Philistine. I'm, right. I'm standing by it. I I I, I say dad gummit. Uh, uh, what what else do I say? I say dad gummit a lot now. Uh, I I say uh, God. Who do what do I call people? I I'm probably ashamed to say, this, but I've gotten better. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's been a while since I've called somebody this. We're we're gonna get a list here. Yeah. I, I I started when I was driving. I'd call people morons. I'm like you, freaking moron! Why didn't you? And then and then Brittany's just looking at me like, yeah, don't drive with me. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I, man, I I pray to God that when he comes, please don't be while I'm on the march sharp at five o'clock. Oh, please, Lord, let it be. You know, between traffic. the hours of, let it be on a Sunday. Yeah. 6 a.m. If I can just put in a request, 6 a.m., let me be sleeping before I've done anything. <laughs> Dude, so, what did I, oh, I've taught Brit, and this is bad, because uh, working from my dad, you know, of course, one of, oh, another Christian cur- cur- cuss word that we say is frick. 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 Like, you know, when we're out there, you know, and uh, when I used to work with my dad, we'd be out there and you know, if we drop something or if we hurt ourselves, we're frick, freaking dang it, guys, freaking dang it. Like, that's what you'll hear. Sounds very redneck and Texan, uh, but you won't hear an actual curse curse word come out. But we're probably saying it in our brains, I can see but, that. but we're we're keeping it clean. Well, and, and by the way, I, I, I've tried not to call people morons. OK, for in my defense, this I'm a human. And sometimes it just comes out. I'm going to try to transition to morons and uh, graduate to Jacob's <laughs> level. That's what I'm going to do. He's All making right. me feel real yeah. bad about myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it, it gets it, it gets to that point sometimes. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, I try. I try to be loving and remember they were created in God's image. You, you, you are a good man. You are a really good man. Cause, oh, I'm, I'm not because had the same not. thing Believe happen me. to me uh, at your your Friday art trail story. Oh, I, I, I'd have got kicked out that art trail. You don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. It took every fiber of my being to not react to that. Oh yeah. You know, I, and, if, and if you don't know what we're talking about, my wife did a, a an art trail for the very first time she's ever done the art trail here in Lubbock, and she was uh, selling her. She she did a she had a vendor spot selling her her journals, and we didn't know where to go. We get there, we're kind of running late, and she's got baby. Where, you know, Brittany's like, I don't know where to go. She was panicking. Well, she wasn't panicking, but she was, we were just kind of like in a hurry. See, I see the, I guess he's the coordinator. He's walking around with this clipboard and I'm like, hey man, you know, uh, you know where the vendors go? And he's like, did you not read the blankety blank rules? And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, this, this dude don't know. 
the the hood that that lives deep within my soul. If he wasn't circumcised by the time I got there, he would have been. I should have said that. He <laughs> uncircumcised. <laughs> he would have been when I got those. Freaking! No, I'm just kidding. No. no, but you know what's funny, man? Is is the 